Thank you guys for 300,000 subscribers. It was just about a month ago I hit 200,000 and we are growing at such a super fast rate. So in honor of hitting 300,000 subscribers, I'm going to be going over 50 Five Nights at Freddy's facts that only OG fans will know about. But before we get right into the video, make sure to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. A lot of these facts are super obscure and aren't really that known about unless you're an OG FNAF fan. I just want to say thanks to everyone who commented on this community post because I used a bunch of your guys' facts from it. So if you see a fact that you commented make sure to comment it down below and say that you commented it on my community post but one last thing before i start the video i have partnered with a company called dream controller that specializes in making custom gaming equipment and as you can see they even made this very cool and custom canvas art banner of my youtube logo you can use this code on screen to get 10 percent off of any order that you get from their website and the best part is you can make your own custom designs so if you look at their website and there isn't a design you like you can actually upload your own image and make your own design for your controller banner or anything else. So that means you can make a Five Nights at Freddy's related controller or well as I said anything else. So if you want to add more Five Nights at Freddy's stuff into your setup or just anything custom you can go to the link in my description and in my pinned comment and use code GAVIN10 to get 10% off. Plus if you purchase anything from their website while using my code or using the link in the description and pinned comment you will be helping out my channel a lot. But without further ado let's get right into the video. Number 1. Scott Cawthon, the creator of Five Nights at Freddy's, originally had nightmares of Bonnie when he was developing Five Nights at Freddy's 1. Number 2. Scott used the reviews from one of his previous games, Chipper and Sons Lumber Co., to design characters for Five Nights at Freddy's, as one of the reviewers said that the characters in the game looked like scary animatronics. Number 3. In the FNAF 1 trailer, Bonnie was actually seen running down the hallway instead of Foxy, and that is because Scott didn't have Foxy designs yet, and it could have also been because Scott originally wanted him to run down the hallway instead. Number 4. Foxy was designed in a 14 hour bumpy car ride to Scott Cawthon's in law's house, and that's one of Scott's reasons of why Foxy looks all torn and beat up. Number 5. All of the animatronic names, Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy, were just placeholders during FNAF 1's development, and Scott was originally going to change the names, but they grew on to Scott, so he decided to keep them. Number 6. Freddy Fazer wasn't supposed to move in the first game, he was originally only supposed to kill you when your power ran out. Number 7. Scott Cawthon's children were the first people ever to experience Foxy's jump scare. And and funnily enough, they experienced at Scott Cawthon's in-laws house after that super long 14 hour car ride. Number 8. Before and while developing FNAF 1, Scott Cawthon made a Kickstarter page to earn money for the game, and he made a whopping zero dollars from it. That's very unfortunate. Scott, we didn't know your game was going to become successful. I would have do I would have donated for you, buddy. Number 9. FNAF 1 was originally going to be Scott Cawthon's last game ever made, as he was going to choose a completely different and new career path if this final game didn't work out. Thank God it did. Number 10. Before before Scott wanted to retire, he had three final games that he was gonna make, but he only wanted to pick one out of the three, and those games were gonna be a sequel to one of his other games, The Desolate Hope, a remake of his first game, and finally, a game about animatronics and security cameras that turned out to be FNAF. Good choice, Scott. Number 11. In FNAF 3 when you beat the game, you get this newspaper cutscene, and in all the blurred text are actually facts, and funny enough, all facts that are in this newspaper are the last seven that I just listed out, and the main reason he did that is is because FNAF 3 was originally gonna be his final game, but we all know how that turned out. Number 12. On Scott's YouTube channel in his FNAF 1 gameplay video, the location called East Hall in the regular game is actually referred to as the backstage in the gameplay video. Number 13. Golden Freddy was not actually his original name, as he was actually named Yellow Bear in the game files. It was only popularized after Markiplier played the game and called him Golden Freddy. Number 14. The FNAF movie was actually bought by Warner Brothers in 2015, but as we all know, the script didn't work out and Scott didn't like it. So the movie was handed to Blumhouse Studios and now we're getting the movie this year, almost 10 years later. Number 15. FNAF 3 was originally supposed to be the final game in the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise, but people complained about Springtrap's jump scares and people didn't think it was scary. So Scott made FNAF 4 to make better jump scares and he also made it because people just wanted another FNAF game. Number 16. In FNAF 2's custom night, Withered Bonnie's bow tie actually clips through his jaw. Number 17. In Sister Location's custom night, it was a originally impossible to beat Golden Freddy hard mode, and that's because the power level was consumed so fast that it actually wouldn't last long enough for you to complete the night, but this was patched immediately. Number 18. In FNAF 1, there was originally going to be a live system, and once you ran out of your three lives, you would have to restart the whole game. Number 19. And similar enough in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, there was a toxic limit that would go up when you wore your mask for too long, and if you wore your mask for too long, you would die. Number 20. In the custom night for Five Nights at Freddy's 2, Balloon Boy and Golden Freddy are 
actually switched on the menu. And what I mean by this is that Golden Freddy should be where all the withered animatronics are, and Balloon Boy should be with all the toy animatronics, but instead they're flipped around for some reason. Number 21. Mangle's gender was actually confirmed by Scott Cawthon to be yes. Number 22. Freddy's full original name was supposed to be Freddy Bear, instead of Freddy Fazbear. Number 23. In FNAF 1's Custom Night, if you put 1987 in the Custom Night menu, you'll get a Golden Freddy jump scare, but that wasn't originally in the game until Scott added it on later to troll fans. Number 24. Chica was originally thought by fans to be a duck. Number 25. The show stage in Final Fantasy Freddy's 2 is the only location where Toy Freddy can be seen with his eyelashes, and is also the only location where Toy Chica can be seen with her beak and eyes attached. Number 26. The show stage in Final Fantasy Freddy's 2 is also the only location where you cannot use your flashlight, as you can't use your flashlight when all the animatronics leave the stage. Number 27. Toy Freddy's mouth gets bigger and wider the closer he gets to your office in Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Number 28. There was actually demos of the first couple of Five Nights at Freddy's games, but none of the newer ones have demos. I really miss those demos. My parents wouldn't let me buy the mobile versions, so I just played the demos instead and they slap. Number 29. In every single game having Five Nights at Freddy's in the title, none of those games actually have Five Nights in them. I mean, they do, but every game has Seven Nights in it. Number 30. Scott was originally going to add a wolf or a beaver animatronic in Five Nights at Freddy's 1, with Freddy being the beaver and Foxy either going to be the beaver or the wolf, but that was scrapped very early on. Number 31. People originally thought that the spirit inside of Freddy Fazbear in FNAF 1 was a girl because you could see him in the girl's bathroom, and that was debunked very quickly. Number 32. Withered Toy Freddy is actually canon in the FNAF universe, as in 2016 there was an official Five Nights at Freddy's trading card that included him on it. That was real merchandise. Number 33. FNAF was developed with an engine called Click Team Fusion 2.5. Number 34. Some different ports of the original FNAF games have different menu music compared to the normal versions. I don't know why they did that because the original menu music for all of the games just are better. I don't I don't know why they did that. Number 35. There's a rare gift that could be seen on the Steam page for FNAF 1 that originally showed Freddy Fazbear's endoskeleton. I don't know if it's there anymore, but it used to be there, and it was very cool actually. Number 36. The first four games all released within the same year. The first one was released in August of 2014, and FNAF 4 was released in July of 2015, which means they all released within one year. That's crazy that a single person made all four of those games within a year. Number 37. Bonnie is the only animatronic in FNAF 1 that doesn't have eyebrows. Number 38. The original unused name of the first Five Nights at Freddy's book, The Silver Eyes, was originally going to be called Five Nights at Freddy's The Untold Story. Number 39. Freddy Fazbear in FNAF 1 is the first animatronic to have two jump scares in the same game. Number 40. Phantom Mangle is the only animatronic in Five Nights at Freddy's 3 that doesn't appear in the extra menu. Number 41. The teaser trailer for FNAF 3 is the most viewed video on Scott Cawthon's YouTube channel as of right now. Number 42. FNAF 3 is the first game that doesn't feature Freddy Fazbear on its main logo icon. Number 43. Toy Chica, the puppet, and Golden Freddy do not appear in the trailer of FNAF 2. Number 44. FNAF 2 was the first game where none of the animatronics had multiple jump scares. Number 45. In the original mobile versions of FNAF 2, if you were on the camera where the music box was being played and clicked on where the mute call button was usually located, you could actually mute the music box. Number 46. Toy Freddy is the only animatronic who rarely goes back to its place after going into your office. Number 47. Withered Bonnie's eyeball color changes in FNAF 2. On the main menu, it's white, but in-game, they're red. Number 48. On all old mobile versions of FNAF 3, Phantom Balloon Boy would actually be able to take away your monitor, allowing the player to not be able to avoid his jump scare. Number 49. On rare occasion in FNAF 3, when the player starts Night 5, Phantom Foxy has a rare chance to immediately jump scare you. And finally, for number 50, Toy Freddy is the only toy animatronic that doesn't go into the vents. But yeah, that's all 50 OG FNAF facts that only OG fans will know about. Please comment down below if there's any other OG facts that I forgot because I might make a part 2 in the future. But without further ado, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's and join my membership to get perks and exclusive benefits that only people in my membership can get. And yet again, thank you guys for 300,000 subscribers. I can't wait to hit 400,000.